All right, guys, thank you for joining me today on AFC Curtis. Uh, I'm Curtis, of course, and I'm pleased. I'm so very fortunate to be joined by one of the newest signings and I think most exciting signings so far in CPL history. We've got Shamit Shom right here from FC Edmonton. How's it going, Shamit? I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm excited to get you on. Uh, my first ever FC Edmonton player. Uh, not only that, but a player that a lot of people right now have been talking about. Uh, you were just signed uh, just a few days ago there by FC Edmonton. Um, can you just fill me in on that? And who reached out to who? Did, who at FC Edmonton reached out to you to get the ball rolling? Yeah, I think, you know, once my contract got de declined with uh, Montreal, um, the head coach, Alan Koch, gave me a call um, just to talk a little bit about you know, what's going on with me in Montreal post, you know, my contract getting declined. And then, you know, from there, we kind of got the ball rolling. Um, you know, I didn't sign right away with him, but, you know, he was in touch with me for a couple of weeks um, while I was looking at, you know, my other options to see what was the best uh, thing to decide on. And in the end, I'm happy that I decided with uh, FC Edmonton. So what are what are a few things that he used to kind of sell you on the club? I mean, to be honest, there wasn't much because I already know a lot about the club, but what I was excited about was, you know, the direction that he wants to take this in and how, how, you know, competitive he thinks he can, he thinks our team can be. Um, and just, you know, him as a coach himself, he's got a high pedigree. He's had, you know, a lot of good experiences with different clubs and he's done well with those clubs. So I know he's a good coach and I trust that, you know, he'd be helpful for, you know, helping to develop my game so that I can improve as a player. And you know, he knows what I need to improve on and whatnot. So we're kind of on the same page of that in terms of, you know, what I need to improve on, what position is my best position and stuff like that. So I just thought it was the best fit to, to come back home. Yeah, no, and, and Marty Thompson now from camphill.ca posted on Twitter when you signed uh, just a few days ago that there are a few other CPL clubs that were interested in signing you, signing uh, your talents there. Uh, could you maybe fill us in on who the other clubs were? Be, were? Um, yeah, there was, you know, interest here and there, but, you know, there was, for the most part, it was, you know, three or four different clubs, but, I mean, there's no point even mentioning their names now because it's, you know, it's already done, but... Um, for me, it was an honor to get, you know, interest from all these clubs knowing that, you know, they want me to be a part of their team. Um, and I'm truly thankful for that. But, you know, at the end of the day, coming home, I think, in CPL was the best option. And, you know, with the coaching staff and, the, you know, you know, the fact that, you know, Edmonton hasn't performed very well the past couple of years, you know, I want to be a key part of helping, you know, change that and, you know, hopefully doing well with FC Edmonton this coming season. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I, I read uh, along the way too recently, just in, in doing some in, uh, research for this interview, that you actually are in school for engineering. Uh, so I just wanted to know, I, I know you're also in school for engineering for with L University of Alberta a few years ago, correct? That's where you started? Yeah. Okay. And then you were doing it the last few years, of course, when you were at the Montreal Impact. So what's, uh, what got you interested in that field? Yeah, I mean... Growing up, I was always a little bit of a nerd, um, and I didn't really think soccer, you know, growing up, soccer wasn't really the best option that was out there, because um, the game hasn't developed, wasn't developed that much back then, so, you know, I was focused on school, I was mostly playing soccer to get a university scholarship, um, you know, get a degree, and then boom, start working. Um, obviously, some different opportunities arose when I stepped and entered the NHL and whatnot, and so, um, you know, I just decided that, you know, school is something that was interesting to me. Uh, I like the idea of engineering, my dad was an engineer, so I just decided to enroll and try doing both at the same time. Um, you know, th thankfully I finished. So, you know, I just finished my electrical engineering degree um, at Concordia University, which was in Montreal. Um, so, yeah, now that's out of the way, I can focus on football for the next little while. Perfect. Well, congratulations on finishing it. Um, Thanks, man. So the next thing here, because hearing that you're a pro athlete, and, and this, is, this is kind of a common place, especially in the CPL, a lot of players maybe doing school in the background besides playing. Um, what was the schedule like balancing trying to balance that lifestyle of being a pro athlete but also going to school yeah it was a pretty hectic schedule um so we would train in the morning from like you know take out the day from like 8 to 12 that would be the part of the day that's taken up by you know going into the facility whatnot before and after training um and then from there i'd probably go straight to school um I, you know depending on you know if i had a class right away i would drive straight to school and park there or i would even you know go back home park park my car and then take the train like you're like public transport just goes easier um and then i was at school probably from like you know, one or two till six or seven, because usually I had night classes because I've made it easier to, to get my degree done. So, you know, six, seven, eight, you know, at times I was stuck there because um, I would go to the library to finish my work because I didn't really like to do my work at home because then I would just get distracted. Mm -hmm. um, and so I kind of repeated that process for, you know, two and a half years, maybe three years. And just thinking about that now, that's pretty crazy to think that it was, you know, that was my schedule for three years. But, you know, it just became, you know, a regular routine for me and it just seemed normal, I guess. So looking back at it now, it seems kind of crazy to think about it, but Back then, I mean, I was able to manage pretty, pretty well. What would you do on away days, though, when you would travel? 
Yeah, it was tricky. I mean, I I would actually try to stay pretty organized where I could get my work done before we travel, so then I could travel like stress free with no work with no like regards to school or anything. Just forget about it. But obviously, there were times where I was really busy and stuff. So you know, you could catch me studying on the plane, doing stuff on my laptop on the plane um, when we traveled. That was that was you know when you're on the plane traveling for games, you're not really doing anything. So that's when I took time to you know study or you know do my homework and whatnot. But um, it was difficult to do because I was always tempted to play cards with the other guys on the team because there were always somebody to play with them. But um, no, I managed, so I'm happy. Very, very organized, very straight to the books. I love it. Um, you, of course, you started with FC Edmonton. Uh, you were a few years ago, just it was not even that long ago, only about what five, six years ago. You're coming up through Academy. Yeah. 2016, you made your pro debut with FC Edmonton in the old NASL. Uh, hard to believe that was five years ago now already. No. Uh, but what are what are some fun memories you have from that first stint with the Eddies? I mean, it was just my you know my first professional contract. I was so young at the time; I was only eighteen or nineteen, um, and I just wanted to have fun. I just wanted to enjoy the experience of being a professional. I never really thought it'd be possible, um, so I was just you know taking the opportunity and enjoying it. Um, even when I first signed, I didn't really expect to get a lot of minutes. I was just thought I was there, you know, to get the you know to have an experience of playing professional. Um, and even if I didn't play, like you know, I was doing school on the side, so that was fine. And, you know, I was getting the best training possible. I was becoming the best player I could be. Um, but then things changed when I started getting minutes and I started playing well and whatnot. And then, you know, everything kind of changed from there, which is which is pretty cool. Cool, cool. Fair enough. I mean, it, it was fun watching you with your debut, by the way, back with Eddie's at five years ago. And it's, yeah. it's honestly, for me personally, super cool just to have you come back to the CPL and to FC Edmonton. Uh, I'm not even actually an Eddie's supporter, but still, it's just it's cool to see. <laughs> uh, but from there in 2017, you moved over to Montreal. You, you got promoted really to the MLS, to Montreal Impact. Uh, and of course, they have a super famous coach now, of course. Uh, what was it like being coached by the legendary Tahir Henry? Yeah, it was a really cool experience. Um, you know, he's a guy, he's like, you know, he's a legend of the game. He's played for great clubs. He's been coached by great managers. Um, and so we kind of, you know, got to experience all that with him as coach. Um, you, could see his, you could see his qualities as a player when he would jump into training with us. But you could see how he thought about the game as a coach, too. And it was so interesting and so, I guess, knowledgeable for me to learn from him. Um, just because under, uh, tactically, he, understand, he understood the game so well. Um, and so that was, you know, really something that was cool for me to experience and learn from him. Yeah, I mean, that was, I mean, he's probably just a fountain of youth. Did, did you ever have to, like, when, maybe when he first came on, did, did you ever, like, be like, you have to pinch yourself almost? Like, this guy's legit here and he's in front of me as my coach? Yeah, I mean, you get used to it or you, you know, you don't really think about that because, you know, once he came, it's more like just, he's my manager. That's all you mm-hmm. have to think about. Um, but definitely the first day when you meet him, you're like, you know, this is the first time you're meeting a legend of the game. And so it's pretty cool. But, you know, after the first day, it kind of died down and it was just, you know, straight to the task of this is my manager. What does he want me to do? Uh, and I'm going to do that. Perfect. Um, what are some aspects that you think was beneficial to your career just in the last four years in Montreal? Uh, so many things, man. I think everything. Um, the speed of play, the physicality, the athleticism, um, all that stuff I feel like I've improved upon since leaving Edmonton to join Montreal and I've just gotten better at. Um, you know, even as a person, just, you know, just out of, like just growing up, I feel like. I, I feel like I left Edmonton um, so naive just because I was living at home since, you know, the entire time. Um, and so moving away really made me grow up a lot. Um, so that's what I would say, I guess, you know, looking back at the four years is that I've just grown so much as a player, but even more as a person. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something a lot of people, I think, don't always look at as like, especially from a fan's point of view, when you look at players, you're like, oh, you know, this is cool. We got these young players coming in. But it's like, that's still a person, you know what I mean? They still have to go through the the growings. And, and I mean, you're super young. I believe you're, what, 19, 20 when you joined Montreal? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, you still had, <laughs> you still had years to grow, right? So, uh, but again, we're super excited to have you in the CPL. Before I let you go. Uh, from this interview here i have a quick game i just want to play with you if, if that's okay with you yeah for sure so the game is debuting right here for all the afc curtis viewers out there it's called there can only be one and yes the name is a work in progress name it's not the final name so if anyone has any suggestions let me know in the comment section down below but so the game plays out so there's going to be eight clubs none of these are cpl clubs they're all some of the biggest clubs really in the world of football that I'm going to have like in a bracket system and I'm going to go, it's going to be these matchups in the quarterfinals. Now I'm going to give you two teams. You're going to pick the team that you like the most out of these two teams. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ultimately at the end of the bracket, there'll only be one team left and that's the team that you like the most out of this, out of this group of clubs. So, so the first matchup here 
We're going to Italy for this one. Enter Milan versus AC Milan. Who do you got? AC Milan. AC Milan. The next one here, we got uh, a Manchester derby here. Manchester City versus Manchester United. I'd say Manchester City because my friend's a United fan, and so I'd rather pick City just to annoy him. <laughs> oh, God. Are you a City fan? No, no, no. no? But okay. I just like it more than United. Fair enough. Me too. Uh, next one, Barcelona, Real Madrid. Barcelona has to be them. Oh, Barcelona, of course. Makes sense there. Last match up here, the quarterfinals, Juventus versus Atletico uh, Madrid. Atletico Madrid. Yeah. By the way, I for the viewers at home, I literally almost slipped up because on my paper, I just wrote Atletico, almost said Atletico, I won that one. But anyway, so <laughs> Madrid through there. So next match up here is uh, AC Milan, Manchester City. Manchester City. Oh, Manchester City, the finals, uh, the only finals they can actually make. Uh, Barcelona, <laughs> Atletico. Barcelona. Barcelona, Man City final. Pep, yeah. Pep, Pep Derby there. So in the final right here, Barcelona, Man City, who do you got? I'm going to say Man City. And Man City. I think that's pretty controversial, but I'm going with Man City just because I like the direction they've been the past three, four years with Pep. Even though they put a lot of money into it to become, you know, a big club and, you know, Barcelona is the origin of Tiki Taka. Yeah. I like Man City right now. <laughs> there you go. That's fair enough. They're fair enough. They're exciting to watch. So Man City wins for the first ever. There can only be one. Again, working title, folks. Again, let me know in the comment section below. Which of the clubs of those eight clubs would you choose? Uh, other than that, though, Schmidt, thank you so much for joining me here on AFC Curtis and for this interview. Really appreciate it. Good luck this season. Uh, super excited to have you in the league. You're definitely one of my favorite FC Edmonton signings so far. Uh, and there's a whole flurry of them this week. So, uh, but thank you so much for joining. Uh, do you want to maybe plug where we can find you on social media? Yeah, sure. Instagram and Twitter. Um, I think my Instagram is Shamit underscore Shom07. Twitter is SSShom underscore 07. And thanks for having me, man. Perfect. Thanks so much. Good luck. We'll see you later. Thank you.